Welcome to Speak for Yourself, presented by Hyundai. Yeah, that got me down, too. As well. <laughs> I'm Marcel Swally. He is Emmanuel. My Abdo. brother. This, I feel like it's been a long time since your Clippers lost, and here we are on Friday. Yes. It's like so much time has passed, America. Yes, a lot of time has passed since I've cut my hair. I actually look a little scruffy up here because of me being in the doghouse right now. But let's get this going. We got two hours with you, so let's start in the NBA, where Giannis, what's his last name? Atatakupo. Say it, brother. Ugo Atatakupo. <laughs> Named MVP today for the second straight season. This is a regular season award, and Giannis Bucks had the best record in the league, but they were bounced in the conference semis, while LeBron James still rolling in the playoffs and led the league in assists for the first time in his career, all at the age of 35. Let's check out the numbers. Giannis leads in points, rebounds, field goal percentage, which were all higher than his previous MVP season, but LeBron has them in assists. So, Acho. Did LeBron get snubbed in the MVP race is the question. Marcellus, I'm so disappointed in you. Why? I'm in a great... Here? No, 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 no. Oh, oh, okay. I'm in a great mood on this Friday, and you snuck a sentence into the scripts you know, that I didn't see earlier. America doesn't know. What he you snuck it in, and he says, which is a regular season award. Yes, LeBron James got snubbed, but here's why LeBron got snubbed. On paper, mm. the MVP for the NBA is, in fact, a regular season award. Now, that's not in the fine print, the description of the NBA MVP award, but... Because it's usually announced right after the regular season, we have now deemed it a regular season award. Oh, I get that. You went Fine, there. America. Okay. Fine. But here's what I don't understand, Marcellus. Yes. We as a nation figure out how to get to the moon in 1969. We However, we can't figure out not to give this award until we've seen everyone oh, play. This is your take. Marcellus, okay. LeBron mm -hmm. James got snubbed for several reasons. If you just have two eyeballs that work, two of them, did work. I don't care. It don't even need to be 2020 vision. You know who the NBA MVP was. Yeah, he won the again. Most, no, 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 no. Yeah, he the won most again. valuable <laughs> player. Guy. But yeah. let me point out the flaw in not only your logic, Marcellus, but the flaw in the NBA's logic. Wow. I haven't even we, said We went yet. back. We went. I can already <laughs> sense it. I, I have my, my spidey America. senses. <laughs> Think about this, Marcellus. What? We let the bubble games count as regular season games to affect playoff standing. We let the bubble games count to affect playoff Fact. standing. Fact. But you voted on the MVP before the bubble. That doesn't make sense, America. That doesn't make sense, Adam Silver. That doesn't make sense, NBA. How can the bubble games count to seed for the playoffs, but the bubble games don't count for the MVP award, Marcellus? Mm. It just it does not add up. Two and two are making six and a half. And I'm a mathematician, <laughs> and that doesn't add up. So... Yes, LeBron James did, in fact, get snubbed because LeBron James told us a while ago, and we didn't listen to him, so that's our fault. He said, remember when I was cruising to the East, cruising through the East, y'all was knocking me, saying, oh, LeBron's just playing in the East. Mm. But now Giannis is cruising through the East, and Giannis doesn't get the same knock. Think about this, bro. Woo. How in God's name is the MVP can't even, ca he's not even capable of getting out of the semis in the East. Wow. Giannis can't get out of the semis in the East. But the last thing I'm going to say before wow. I let you start spewing out some nonsense, which I anticipate to come, is this. Giannis' team got gentlemen swept. They only won one game. That is against nice. The, against the Heat. Way to be a gentleman. But the only game they won, they won without Giannis. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only one they won. They won without Giannis. How you going to win uh, the only game in the semis he's without dope. the MVP? Yeah. I don't, you notice I didn't even need my notes for this argument. It sounds so, like this, you this, should. This, look this is look a, at your notes. This is an argument, Marcellus, <laughs> that you don't even need to derive statistical oh. information from. You just need to derive common sense, uh, which I have. But it is uncommon. Oh, Acho. That was hot take central. And I didn't think I was going to get a co-host coming from the factory <laughs> over factory there common sense. that came in here with a hot take that woke up this morning and, and was more focused on your wardrobe and your look I than your did. actual notes that you I didn't even did. read. Here's the thing. You're going to try and redefine what the award is because you're saying it's not properly defined. Because look when they give it out. How dare you give it out at this time and not consider all things. We know that this is a regular season award. But you wanted to go there and remix the award and say, oh, how come the bubble games count towards the playoffs, but they don't count towards the MVP? It didn't make sense. If they did it didn't make count, sense. if they did count regular season bubble games towards the MVP, that hurts LeBron's chances of winning the MVP. You remember how bad he looked coming in? Get to your point. Get to, the <laughs> get to your point. <laughs> All right, get I just to had to point. beat you up before I even get to my point. You remember Dirk? Remember Westbrook when they didn't get out the first round? And they were MVPs that year. I didn't hear Acho with his hot take then. But 
I digress. Let me answer the question. Did Please. LeBron James get snubbed? Hell no, he didn't get snubbed. And it's amazing. Every time I hear this argument, I always hear the AARP age birth certificate conversation. I haven't brought that and, up. And, 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 you know what? I haven't brought that you up, know America. And, and, and then when they don't go there, guess where they go? Where they go? They go to this. Oh, oh, well, if you use your eyeballs, and you know what? I do use my eyeballs. I use my eyeballs to look at stats. Because men lie, women lie, but numbers don't Num numbers lie. Numbers do lie. This is the full screen king turn to show you what back to back looks like. Take notes, Drake. Back to back. Giannis MVP seasons, look at him. He improves in terms of win percentage. He improves in points per game. Oh my God, his three point percentage goes up. Wow, his <laughs> rebounds this? and assists goes up. And listen, why I bring this up? Why, why, sir? Why I bring this up? Because if you are on a team, let's use your eye test. I could beat you with your own logic. If you're using your eye test, LeBron last year, you're going to say he got hurt and they didn't make the playoffs. LeBron this year as AD and they make the playoffs to the number one seed. This guy, if you talk about Giannis, doesn't have an AD, <clears throat> improves his numbers, <laughs> improves his team's win oh. percentage, and does more with less than LeBron. So even in the eye test, Giannis is the back of America, MVP. America, America. Cooking, I'm, I'm Yesterday, cooking. Marcellus I'm started cooking. snitching, so it's time to snitch. I don't know how much my one shot can zoom in. But see, before Marcellus gives y'all the full screen as a full screen king, we get these printouts of the full screen as well. And in the printout, Marcellus has so nicely scratched out the statistics that don't work for Giannis. You see, I can't Mar see that. Marcellus what is you talking about, Marcellus, see, I don't even know if y'all can zoom in on this one. Don't you but if you can, please, please do. What Marcellus has tried to do misprint. here is, is scratch out so beautifully the oh, field goal percentage. I knew you were going to go That is here. what Marcellus, you, yeah, take me in. Bring me in nice and close. Hell, it's his, Mar it's Marcellus, his field goal percentage. Marcellus has tried to scratch out the statistics Boy, you are, don't do Marcellus you are, justice. You just shows the liar, the liar that you are, Marcellus. Mm. Yes, statistically, Giannis did improve from one year to the next year. But this isn't and, an award. This and isn't, wins and losses. This isn't an award of Regular who season. was better than their former self. This, this isn't the, the who former was, self is the MVP. Yes, it the, is. Who was better than their former was LeBron self better award? this year? LeBron he just finished this talk, year. Oh, and got AD there. help. I'm glad you went there. AD is the MVP of the Lakers. How in the hell LeBron the MVP of the league? Are you done, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you done? I was getting a little amped. LeBron got hurt last year, and what oh, happened to the Lakers? That's what happened to old people. What happened to the Lakers? He <laughs> got hurt, and they didn't make the playoffs. Oh. He plays this year under the one seed. He plays this year. Who? About, he plays. <laughs> <what? laughs> He plays this year and they're the one seed about to in the Western Conference Finals, about to go to the NBA Finals. If that doesn't scream MVP to you, I'm not here. My team isn't a playoff team. Mm. I am here. My team is the best team in the NBA. But more than that, let's just talk real. You're an intelligent human being. So yes. I don't know why you're acting as if you're not, Marcellus. Not Think about this. It's gonna be active. When did we find out who won the award? This morning. This morning. If you would have just simply feet. voted on the award at this point in time, the Lakers have a better win percentage than the Bucs. The <laughs> Lakers are a better team than the Bucs. You're trying so, to say when we find out is when they've just no, started to vote. What, what I'm saying the is, hell? how are we, how are we, the criteria for this award makes no what sense. Won't you it is illogical. Won't you sign a petition to change the criteria? Because while the criteria is this, Giannis is the back-to-back -back MVP, but you know what? Sometimes you can be too close to somebody and you don't understand it. I got to go to somebody to break this tie. I got to go to Slick Rick the Buker, our Fox up, NBA analyst. He's too, he's too far in the too forest logical. to see the trees. Help us out. Did LeBron get snubbed in the MVP race? Yes, a thousand percent yes. And they're Dude. not going to change the criteria because of what we're doing right now, which is debating the hell out of this. The NBA isn't going to define what MVP is because we have all of these conversations. You know what I love about doing this show with you guys? What? Is what? the fact that I'm doing it with two well-spoken, intelligent, former athletes who have played sport at an extremely high level, and they understand that it's not always about the numbers. Mm. And what am I hearing? And a debate <sighs> between you two guys <laughs> all about numbers. freaking numbers. 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 Come numbers. on now. Numbers. The fact of the matter is, 
I don't go with the idea, Acho, that those eight bubble games should have counted towards Thank the, the MVP it. voting. It's eight games. That's still <laughs> a small <laughs> percentage. Chill out. Chill out. But Chill what out. the Chill bubble out. does tell us <laughs> is that LeBron James was indeed snubbed Thank because you. we got the opportunity yes. to see the Milwaukee Bucks yes, operate yes, without Giannis Antetokounmpo mm -hmm. against yes, the very right. best. Did. You know and did they function well? Yes. We underestimated the voters who didn't have LeBron at the top of their ballot like I did, underestimated exactly what Giannis meant to that team and what he had around them because of the numbers that Marcellus has uh, put out about the, uh, the regular <laughs> <put> season. <laughs> let, me put it, let me put it in terms that you guys can appreciate. Thank you. Here we I will go to, to appreciate. Well, yeah. We'll go to last night's uh, game between the Browns and the Bengals. Mm -hmm. Baker Mayfield had the higher QBR. Mm -hmm. He had the higher passer rating. He won the game. But if you look at those two guys, who was the most valuable quarterback See, in terms of what it. their it. team it's did it's last smart. night? He didn't have to go to Columbia. That, to me, Story is the eye test. The you know the guy who Damn. affects his team the Story most, time. and for me, that is most valuable player. You take away LeBron James, I don't care what the numbers say. Thank you. You take LeBron James away from the, the Los Angeles Lakers, they are, maybe they're a playoff team, but they're not much more than that, and they're certainly not playing for a title right Talk now. Talk about it. We saw what the Talk Milwaukee Bucks it. are without Giannis Antetokounmpo. Still a very formidable team. Man, that story time just bored me. Y'all just threw numbers away. out I'm the window away. just so you can have a story time. So all I got from that slick, Rick, is Baker Mayfield should win the NBA MVP, I guess. I don't know what the hell you were talking no. about. Help Come him on, Nacho. That didn't make look, no look, sense look, to me. Slick, I totally understood what you were saying. Here's what people do. do. Like stories. Here's what people do. Marcellus, he takes a lazy approach, right? When he doesn't necessarily have time to watch the games because he has other priorities. He has kids. He has a wife, et cetera. He just goes and looks at numbers. Okay, uh, let me crunch these. I, hey, didn't go to, hey. I didn't go to Columbia. Uh, I was a, a you know, salutatorian or valedictorian, so I am relatively smart. Let me crunch my numbers with my TI-85 plus calculator. Giannis should win. Marcellus, <laughs> you an athlete, bro. Now, I'm not going to put you in a box. I'm not going to make you the dumb jock that the world tried to make you, no, I'm but I'm going to make you both. I'm going to make you both an intelligent human being and an athlete. But the intelligent human being what? plus the athlete should have the ability for you to decipher the fact that LeBron is clearly the MVP. Mar Marcellus, what? what's that middle word? What's that V stand for? That V in my name? No, no, an MVP. Oh, uh, it's Vernon for and, me. No, no, an MVP, uh, Marcellus. Valuable. It stands for valuable. <laughs> value. When is value determined? In the playoffs. That is when this value is determined. Marcellus, you're taking wow. a lazy approach and you... Of all people, you go against the grain. I said you were an outlier. You said I'm not an outlier. You said I'm hard work. I'm, the I'm dedication. I'm the you go rule. against the grain. You of all people on this planet, Marcellus, should understand Giannis for MVP is a lazy take. LeBron did, in fact, get snubbed. It's simple. Here we go. You just took me back to class, but I'm the teacher. <laughs> Sit down, students. Um, you want to give me a conversation about value. And I want to give you a conversation about price. So let's do this. Let's have both conversations. Price is what you pay for. So, you know, if you're really in the open market, free market, you have something of price you want to get the most for it, right? Giannis has the most in terms of numbers. He has the higher price. But then you want to say, no, 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 no. Let's talk about value, which is really a conversation of what did you pay for based on what was the relative resources around it? Oh, so was this overvalued, undervalued? Oh, you want to get into a value conversation, you lose again. Giannis was not playing with the same level of talent that LeBron James was. Chris Middleton is not Anthony Davis. Not a single soul in this world has said that Chris Middleton is a top five player. But everybody walking this planet knows that. Anthony Davis is a top five player. So even in a value conversation, when you're related to the resources around you, you lose that conversation, price and value. But let me get to my points What's your since point? I got to defeat y'all first all I'm the time. I'm bored. What's okay. your point? I told you a long time ago, I like math over English because math has no feelings. It's that's just fair. numbers. And you didn't like my numbers before, and you try to poo-poo on them like that's all I brought. I got two back pockets, brother. Here's some more numbers for you in case you don't like this. Giannis is a guy who went out there and lost only nine games when he was on the court in the regular season, as the award dictates. 48 and nine at the time of voting, didn't lose two games in a row on the 
Milwaukee Bucks. Best player on the best team by the numbers, and he improves on his performance with less around him. The That's Bucks why this guy team. is the most the valuable. The Bucks aren't the best Malcolm team. Malcolm Brogdon wasn't there this year, and he made up for that difference. Look, LeBron I can't. LeBron added Look, the can't. top five player Look, in the Look, world. I'm getting dumber. And you try to Look, act I'm, like I'm getting dumber. that doesn't have the an longer impact. The longer I sit at this desk, Slick Rick, he, I'm getting dumber. LeBron My win? IQ is dropped 10 points. He doesn't win in numbers. He doesn't win in, in value. Where does he win? Marcellus. Yes, sir. You went to the other back pocket, and you pulled out more numbers. <laughs> I thought that was a different that's back pocket. That's all I got. <laughs> you just keep going numbers and numbers. Here's the funniest part about this, and it's why I don't begrudge LeBron or feel bad for LeBron and the fact that he did not win MVP. And it's because he benefited from this exact same thing in 2010. Two, that was the summer of LeBron. He had, this, he had numbers better or as good as the numbers he had the previous year. So how could he not be MVP again? Much like Giannis Antetokounmpo. And what happened that year? Huh. The Cavs got knocked out in the second round. And meanwhile, Kobe Bryant, who should have been the real winner, ends up taking the Lakers to a title in spite of the fact that Pau Gasol and a number of other Lakers were hurt. Andrew Bynum hurt through the majority of the year. So we didn't, we didn't understand exactly what Kobe Bryant was doing. Unless you watched the games and understood all of the plays that Kobe meant uh, made to carry that team through tough times. Giannis Antetokounmpo breezed through the regular season. Award. Yes, they didn't have Malcolm Brogdon. How often do teams get to prepare for the Bucks mm. on a nightly basis uh -huh. saying, we're going to take advantage of the fact that they don't have Malcolm Brogdon? Doesn't happen during the regular season. As soon as they got to the postseason, mm. you got to find out exactly how important Ma Malcolm magic. Brogdon was to, to the Bucks to and magic. how less valuable Giannis mm. Antetokounmpo was. So Thank you. LeBron wow. didn't get it. He deserved it. He did. But you know what? We've seen this before because there are too many voters who lean back on the statistics. Like Marcellus. They don't want to be caught too out. Lazy they voters. don't want to use the real eye test, Thank which you, you, both of you, Thank both of you know that eye test. Mm -hmm. You saw it last night in terms of who the better quarterback is, mm -hmm. the more you valuable quarterback is. I don't care what the numbers say. You understand that, which is why I don't get the argument for Giannis in this you situation. You know what's so crazy? What's crazy? You guys don't want to stay in the field of play to make your argument. You're telling me about the running back that runs out of bounds and all of a sudden on the sidelines start doing all this stuff. And then you're like, yo, look at what he's doing on the sidelines. When you're Giannis versus LeBron in the MVP discussion, it has to happen in the regular season. I don't give a damn. I'm sorry, LeBron. You guys are trying to undermine Giannis's value without using numbers. But, but look, anytime you want to show himself. any transaction of value, if I walked into your house right now, Slick Rick, and I saw all those balls up there, and I was like, oh, they look valuable, you would have a number in your head, and I would have a number to transact with you. You cannot dismiss numbers in a conversation just to seduce me with some sorry, sad stories about me. value. Let's move on, coming up at the top of the hour. I want a first round decision right now. <laughs> Petition is out for Carson Wentz to sit on the bench. We'll tell you if he's already on the hot seat. But first, the Cowboys are having problems closing out games. We'll tell you if it will impact Dak's contract talks, according to y'all. That's not about numbers. Next, Speak for Yourself is presented by Hyundai. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself, presented by Hyundai. Let's head to Dallas, where the Cowboys are coming off a loss to the Rams by three points. Dak Prescott is now only one and seven. Ugh in one score games. Next up for the Cowboys is a home matchup against the Falcons and Dak hopes the losses in late games won't become the norm. Let's take a listen. The last thing I want to call it is a trend. Um, it's, it's been a tough challenge that we haven't been able to, as you said, get over that, uh, get over that hump in the last year and then obviously uh, this past Sunday, but um, one score games is something that I take pride in, take pride in having the ball in my hands late in the game and as you just said, uh, yeah, I'm not very proud of of the way that I've handled it and the team's handled it uh, in the past recently, but um, it's something that I'm for sure will will change. So, Marcella, should these uh, close losses be a, a red flag for the Cowboys in contract negotiations with that? Boy, I've never seen a person smile without smiling. <laughs> you over there laughing at this. No, this shouldn't be a red flag for the Cowboys in terms of negotiations with Dak Prescott, second most wins since he's been in the league. You pay winners in the NFL. 
This is a problem, though. I, I, I want to make sure I start off my argument by saying no team is perfect and no player is perfect. I talked to you about the positive attributes and the negative attributes that we used to get in our weekly game plan, no matter who the opponent was, whether it was a Tom Brady or a Peyton Manning, all the way down to a guy you never heard of. Everyone had a two-sided sheet, positives and negatives. Mm -hmm. And if you look at a team in its entirety, mm -hmm. you will see the same thing, positives and negatives. Mm -hmm. We saw the Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs, have a negative attribute list. And it was a lot focused on the defensive side. They shore that up, especially latter part of the season, and all of a sudden, you see the Kansas City Chiefs win. He know he's about, to, lose, he he about to see it in your face. He know he's about to take an L this block. I really? You try to redeem yourself from yesterday? Go ahead, go ahead. I'm all I'm of, I ain't even going to hit you with my full screen oh, yet. That, that ain't coming. The point of it is, let's focus in on Dak. Let's focus. And you try to say, oh, Dak got a problem. Dak got a real problem he can't fix. He can't win one score of games, even though Dak Prescott is a winner in one score games, 19 and 14 in one score games. So my first layer for you is every team has an issue they need to fix. Dak of late, and there's only one common denominator what was going on in these one score drives. Kellen Moore, you need to win first down. Oh, it's and oh, two. Oh, sorry, America. The, <laughs> sorry, America. And two, know. the players have to understand Kellen Moore's fault. That's Kellen Moore's fault. That's yeah, 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 Kellen Moore's fault. And the two, the players have to understand there's a long history of success, even though of late they've been trending downward. Marcellus, when I walk through the aisles at Walmart or Target, I see a ton of games. I mm. see... Mm. Uh, I, I, That's you how you watch Tetris. the games. No, no, no. It you makes see, sense. You might see Tetris. It, it, it shows. You might see Connect Four. You might see Monopoly. Oh, okay. But what I haven't seen as of late is the blame game. <laughs> and I haven't seen that because I guess you haven't copywritten oh, it yet. Oh, but what you just tried to play you. is the blame game. I'll give you oh, reasons. It's, oh, it's, it's Kellen Moore's fault Please. now, even though they just got oh, rid of Jason Garrett. Let me give you some reasons. Chris Garrett don't Let me first. give you some facts. Let me give you oh, some nuggets. I, thought we I don't mind quarterbacks having negative attributes. Mm. I don't mind. People said that Drew Brees was too short. People said that Drew Brees' arm wasn't strong enough. Mm -hmm. People said that Peyton Manning wasn't mobile. Mm -hmm. But your negatives can't be losing one-score games. America, I'm going to let y'all sound smart at the water cooler. Who said that? 24% of games in the NFL are divided, decided by four Three points or less. Less than a quarter. 50% of games in the NFL are decided by one possession. Yeah. The only thing that a quarterback must be good at mm. is one possession. That's it. Games. Oh, okay. If you're talking about something of being think about the Seattle Seahawks. 11 of their 12 games were won by one possession. The NFL, mm -hmm. you, everybody talks about defend a blade of grass. That's what you say in the locker room. Because it comes down to something as small as a blade of grass. The great teams, they win close games. Yes. The not great teams, they lose close games. It's not a coincidence. Think about the greatest team, the greatest dynasty of our generation. The New England Patriots. Been to nine Super Bowls under Belichick and Tom Brady. Ooh. All but one of those Super Bowls were decided by one possession or less. All but one, Marcellus. I heard the you the first time. Look, yeah, you didn't hear. You I heard mean, me, but you weren't listening. It ain't going to feel any different the second you, time. You heard me, but you weren't <laughs> listening. Oh, if you're man. not good at one-score games, oh. then you're not a good team. Mm. Great teams are good in the last minutes. But furthermore, remember... Um, um, there was a coach who said he, he saw a receiver making a, a great diving catch in practice. Don't you be stealing my stories. Making a great diving catch in practice. Still and he said, story. if you would have run faster, you, you wouldn't have had to dive. You wouldn't have to die. Yes. The problem is, Cowboys, if y'all would have played better, if y'all wouldn't if y'all would have run faster, you wouldn't even have to die. But before I end this first lap, you need let to me just it. let me put you on the canvas with one little note. The only quarterbacks worse than Dak Prescott in one score games. Are his backup Andy Dalton, 0 and 6. This is as of last year. Phillip Rivers, who was 2 and 10. Flacco, 1 and 4. Jameis Winston, 3 and 6. Mm. Three of those four guys are currently backups, mm. Marcellus Wiley. Mm. And the other one is Phillip Rivers, who throws more picks than he has kids. Go Ooh. ahead. Oh, wow. <laughs> I can't believe you walked into every trap I have. You always know this. Let me help you out. Please, if I know. don't start off with facts, I'm setting traps. And your butt walked into every trap I got set. So now I'm sitting here, oh my God, which one to pick? I'm going to pick this one right here. Mike McCarthy comes out and says, you guys love to spin it. Like, oh, you're losing a lot of close games and spin it as a negative. But you can also spin that as a positive. They're in a lot 
of close games, right? And then you took that and conflated it and made it an argument for Russell Wilson. And you said Russell Wilson won 11 games by one possession last year. Amazing Russell Wilson. Okay, it's time for a full screen since you want to go there. Full screen king time. Let's talk about winning time since Russell Wilson getting all the props for winning in game-winning drives in the last four years. I wonder where Dak Prescott lands on this list next to Mr. Last Minute, Last Drive, oh, one game, one, one score possessions. Where's Dak's name in relationship to Russell Wilson? Oh! right there. Now, take me off full screen. Here's the funny thing. What's the funny thing? You just told me that it's about winning and winning those close ones. Who has the second most wins since they've been in the league? Dak Prescott. Who has a winning record in one-score games? Dak Prescott. And then you're going to bring up lowly dudes like Andy Dalton and all those guys who are behind him. Those guys are not even in the conversation. Who's in the conversation of being clutch? Russell Wilson may be the poster child, but Dak Prescott has earned it by the merit and by the numbers. Same dude. Let me get loose for this yeah, beat down I'm about loose. to lay on you. Okay. America, here's what I let Marcellus off the hook doing yesterday but I can't let him off the hook during the day. I'm here. Marcellus, these inflated numbers that you just gave me, they want to know where they arrived. 2016, that 13 and 3 season that Dak Prescott not had. No, no. He went 7 and 2 in close games that year. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. The majority. I said 19. That is, it's the 7 the majority of 19. 33%. 33%. Majority 33%. Texas. Come on, Texas. <laughs> Move on. Let me get to my point. Let's do okay Here's this. my problem, Marcellus. What? Stop living in the Past, I had to clap on you in between them words because that's how that. far I mean about it. That's how hard I mean about it. I felt Stop that. living in the past, bro. Okay, let's Jack, go to week two then. Jack let's go to week two. That Prescott Marcellus, <laughs> what? he inherited a <gasps> Super Bowl caliber team. That won four games before what? he got oh, there? They were three and one under Tony Romo. And what happened? Romo got hurt. How did they finish? Because Kellen Moore started and he went over I know, two. I know you hate numbers, but what was the final record? Why? Why? <laughs> Why? Are you, because are you allergic because to Because their numbers? starting quarterback got hurt. Marcellus, you live your life based on an inflation of statistics. You live your life married to this man, Ooh. Dak Prescott, he married to That's this man because of the inflation of some numbers. Live in reality, Marcella. Oh, Dak wow. Prescott oh. was one in six last year. Hmm. One in six last yeah, yeah, year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Games decided by one point or less. The NFL is a league decided by one possession or less. Uh -huh. your, 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 your quarterback, Dak Prescott, is one in six in those games. Uh -huh. He is in the same sentence as Jameis. But let's talk about the flip. Let's the, flip? Talk, the flip side is, let's talk about the quarterbacks who play close games as well. Aaron Rodgers last year, mm. he was 8-1. Russell Wilson, I told you, he was 10-2, including the playoffs. Lamar Jackson, he was 5-1. Uh, Deshaun Watson, he was 8-3 in those close games. None of them dudes did anything All those dudes, all those no dudes were in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, so what? All Zach those dudes were in the playoffs. He's won a division twice. Hold on, you just told me that if you lose your starting quarterback, uh, what's going to happen? You're not going to win games. Matt Castle, anybody, line, Matt Castle, line one, New England. Uh, it, it, don't make this an argument about facts because you'll lose it. Don't make this an argument about numbers. You'll lose that. If you want to go story time, campfire, I am here for you. But these numbers suggest that Dak Prescott is once again not getting the consideration for being as clutch as he's been in his entire career. The numbers you are dated. You cannot marry him. The numbers are dated. Marcellus, I don't want, in 2016, what? you were on another show at another network. I don't care how that show <laughs> rated. I'm sorry. Sorry, I, I don't care. That. I, I care that. about what did you do here in the present day. Stop telling okay. me about Dak Prescott I, right. when you played with Des Bryant. My, Please. My, my favorite part about just working with you is the fact that you can push back and then I can go to a different lane. So now I'm going to go into your logic. Let's not live in the past. So let's throw out the numbers from last year. That wasn't the same, Coach. That's the past, right? Let's talk about this year. And all you have is one game as a sample oh, one. size. Correct. One. Correct. And it, they, this was a team that was three of 12 on third down. What is third down called in money down? Money down baby. All they did was put themselves at a disadvantage in the money down. We cannot now create this long argument that's negative for Dak if we're going to look in the past. Because if you look in the past, you can't just grab last year. That's fair. you got to grab his whole career. Or let's cut it off, say that was one game and an anom anomaly because this is a guy who is right there with Russell let me Wilson, ask you this. but you don't want to give let him me that ask credit. You this. Let me ask you this, because let's stop arguing for a second for the sake of TV, and let's just be real. Cameras aren't even there. They're not They're even not here. Just me and you. Oh, just, me, just me and you having a I real pick conversation. pick my nose, then. Go <laughs> ahead. Me and you having a real conversation. <laughs> What's up? The 0-1, the, the one game that Dak Prescott lost, 
Is that not more indicative of his last year struggles as opposed to his 2016 success? The, the Rams game that we just saw, it's just me and you. Don't yeah. lie to the camera. Don't lie to the camera. We're already on commercial break. Okay. It's just me and you. Yeah. The one game he lost to the Rams, is that not much more indicative of last season? Yeah. Or are you going to go draw from 2016 to undermine what we saw against the Rams? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to draw from 2016 for two reasons. I know. See, that's why I can't. First of all, you mind me and my wife. As soon as I say something, she goes, oh, boy, I hate this dude. Like, we <laughs> So you probably want to start liking me, damn it. Um, if you look at Dak Prescott, what changed? There's two things that I have to hang my hat on. One, you have a new head coach. And the integration of head coach to offensive coordinator is a thing. Absolutely. Like, what plays you calling? You sure? And then that translates on the field for Dak. So Dak is still learning a new language, even though it's the same OC. Remember, if you talk about Dak learning his new head coach and new system fully, was a month ago. So this is not continuity as it's being termed. The second thing Fair. is Dak Prescott, when he was thrown into the fire before in 2016, mm -hmm. wasn't fully prepared for that moment, went out there and balled out. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is if you get a draw on the road against the Rams in the new stadium, no fans, and you get that defense, it's going to be tough sledding when you have no continuity. So let me ask you this. How long will you stay on this ludicrous argument? Like, if, if the <laughs> Cowboys the number suggested, if the, if the Cowboys as are long as 3, the number if they lose another close one to the Falcons and lose another close one to the Seahawks, are you still going to sit here babbling about, well, ba back in 2016, Dak Prescott was, how long? I just want to know. I'm so going to so do, so do it until he has a losing record in those moments. So far, he's far from having that same losing record. Did I win? Did I win? Did I win? No, All right, whatever. <laughs> Coming up, Emmanuel Sanders says Tom Brady doesn't look like a goat in a Bucks uniform. Damn, that was fast. <laughs> we'll tell you if we agree. Next, speak for yourself, presented by Hyundai. I thought the cameras weren't there. I thought we. <laughs> Welcome back to Speak for Yourself, presented by Hyundai. Let's talk about Tom Brady, who looked a little non goatish like in his Bucks debut last week against the Saints. Bruce Arians called him out. Now, Saints wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders is taking shots. Black. Sanders said, quote, it didn't feel like it was Tom Brady out there. Now you put Tom Brady in a New England Patriots uniform. That feels more like Tom Brady out there. Acho, but we see the GOAT Tom Brady in Tampa this season. Ah, this one pains me to say, Marcellus. We're not going to see GOAT Tom Brady in Tampa. And uh, I'm reminded of who was it, Nick Anderson for the Magic, when he said... Uh, 45 Michael Jordan ain't the same as 23 Michael Jordan. Brady changed his number. Tampa Bay oh. Tom Brady ain't the same as oh, New England oh, Tom oh, Brady. Oh, I feel you. I feel but you. let me I remind you, you oh, okay. and let me remind America, if we can take a look at that Super Bowl clip, the last time we saw GOAT Tom Brady was in the Super Bowl in that GOAT season against the Eagles, even though he couldn't bring it home. Mm. And it was at this specific moment when he dropped the pass that not only did he lose his super goat powers, he lost the game that. as well. You really because, believe this. No, no, no. After this play, Marcellus, what? Tom Brady's completion percentage had dropped by 8%, and it's been dropping ever since. What America, was that? Uh, that was in 2017. 2017. That 2017 season. Okay. Okay. Um, the 2018 Super Bowl. Because think about this, Marcellus. His touchdown since that moment dropped by 10%, oh my and God. then they went and they dropped by 20%. Mm. He's less, his, his yards per attempt significantly down by one yard from 7.6 to 6.6. Mm. But more importantly, he also lost his weapon, and Bill Belichick. See, oh, because yeah, remember, guy, what we know huh? is that Tom Brady plus Bill Belichick equal greatness. Tom Brady plus question mark is still equaling TBD. Mm. Uh, and so I don't think we'll see the GOAT Tom Brady in Tampa, Marcellus. But if we're being honest, we haven't seen the GOAT Tom Brady in about three years anyway. Yeah, look, I don't want to go at Emmanuel Sanders too tough. I actually like him. He's a cool cat, great player. Great uh, name. Uh, great uh, first name. Great, yeah, he's stupid. I, 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 this is insane already. Like, how much equity should you have if you're a GOAT? Like, first of all, there shouldn't be GOATs. It shouldn't be plural. It's a GOAT. And if you are a GOAT, damn it, I could just switch uniforms and have one bad game and also, ah, oh, he ain't the same. I hope he's not talking about just X's and O's in terms of performance. I hope he was just going to the place of, I don't like Tampa's uniforms as much as I like the Patriots, even though I disagree with them there. Tom, Tampa, Tom looks good in that uniform, and he will look good in terms of production. Permission, Acho, to use numbers, Please. since you just did. Please. Permission, Please. Acho, to go in the past, since you Please. just did. I can't believe in one block you talk about, well, you got to talk about numbers and all that. You start talking about yards per attempt and all that. So now let me beat you at your own game. 
<laughs> Tom Brady, 2014. You know what happened in the draft that year? What happened? They drafted Jimmy G. You know what happened on the field that year? 2014, the New England Patriots lost to the Kansas City Chiefs. Remember that game when you were like nine years old? 41 to 14 on Monday Night Football. Mm -hmm. The Chiefs. Oh my God. Now the Patriots were four and four, lost in front of the entire world. Oh, everybody wrote them off. No more Super Bowls for you guys. It's been 10 years since they won one. Oh my God. Jimmy G, you're on the clock. It's time to replace Brady. This is 2014. You know what he did the rest of that year? Just that year. Went 10 and 2 the rest of the way. 65% of his passes, 29 touchdowns, 103 passer rating, and won a Super Bowl. But I remember how oh, the sky was falling. Emmanuel Sanders and Acho in their cribs saying, eh, it's over in New England. But I have to continue. 2016, I heard it again. The GOAT is over. Tom Brady's done. The flake gate, remember that? He got suspended. Oh my God. You know what he did since then? <laughs> oh my God, this dude has won four of the last five Super Bowls since this 2014. Won three of them, two Super Bowl MVPs, and an NFL MVP since they started to write it was over for the GOAT. My point is, how many times y'all gonna go to this well before you realize it's dry? Or are you really just trying to play? We're gonna just wear this narrative out until it finally comes true when he's 50. Marcellus, Which one if, is if I was nine in 2014, that would make Tom Brady 23. <laughs> and the fact of the matter is, Tom Brady is 43. So stop living in the past, Marcellus. I you understand did. that you, you, you made, me you made the, the NFL's top 50 twice in a row back in 1988. <laughs> I understand that. But Marcellus, you have to assume you got a bright future ahead of you. There's a reason that the rear view mirror mm. is way smaller than the mirror in front of you. Okay. Because you got to see where you're going. And mm. the fact of the matter is, you stay looking in your rear view, it's Marcellus, the because the the, your, your glory days are behind you. My best days are in front of me. That's mm. why I look ahead. Tom Brady, if I'm looking in the recent, if I'm looking ahead. Just show me a clip from the Super Bowl If, if I'm looking at, uh, yes, because you got to know your past. What did what I go? <laughs> you to know your me. present <laughs> success. I Marcellus, the problem is, you keep going to 2014, bro. Just look last year. 2016. We don't have to go. Okay. That's still five years ago. Okay. Can you look last year? Okay. Look recently, Marcellus. What about what about the, recent, the recent <laughs> stats say that Tom Brady ain't been the GOAT. So now you're going to take Tom Brady. Give him a new running game. Give him a new OC. Give him a new head coach. Give him a new city. Give him two wide receivers who are ball hungry. Give him his old tight end plus a new tight end. And you're going to expect him to give you the same GOAT performance when <sighs> he didn't even do it in New England. Remember, Marcellus, the only reason Tom Brady had success last year because the Patriots had one of the best defenses we've seen the in the only? decade. How dare you get on TV and say the only. Do you know what this is? Okay, I'm not going to go into the past as much as I'm going to say what this is right now. What month is this? Let me look at my one. September. Ah. Oh. Tom Brady in September. You know, in New England, they always say, oh, in Foxborough, December, January, it's a problem. Tom Brady, September, eight and four, the last four years. You know what that means? He kind of starts slow even when he wins the Super Bowl. Won't you respect that this guy still has his superpower and he's still the GOAT? But let's get our, somebody else in here to settle this argument. Our guy, Bucky Brooks. Bucky, it's been a long time, but please come and bring the noise. Is Tom Brady in Tampa this season going to be a GOAT again? It's over. <laughs> it's a done deal. It's over. We, won't, we won't see Tom Brady like that. Tom Brady, it, it, it's, it's, a done, it's a done deal, Marcel. So I hate it for you. But right now, I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have buyer's remorse. Mm. And here's why. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers had a better quarterback in Jameis Winston, and they're looking at Tom Brady now, and they feel like they've been hoodwinked. <sighs> They've been bamboozled. They've been, bamboozled. They've been run them off. It is, it is, it's led astray. It's, it's over because here's what I have because I know you guys go with facts over feelings. Yes. So I got some facts for you. Please. So in the last 10 games, your boy, the GOAT, Tom Brady, Tom Brady's only four and six. Mm. So oh, the reason we celebrate him as the GOAT is because he's a winner. But he's only four and six. six. So then let's go to stats because I know sometimes when you talk about Dak, you guys like to bring out individual stats. Mm -hmm. So completion percentage, yards per attempt, mm. passer rating. Mm. Tom Brady ranks in the bottom five oh of the guys oh, that man. qualify. He said bottom, bottom five. five. <laughs> oh, God. So then when I go back and I look and I'm like, Terrible. okay, well, about Bruce Arians, and maybe the reason why Bruce Arians went to the podium after the game was so distraught 
is because somebody probably gave him a copy of Jameis Winston's stats from the last 10 games. Mm-hmm. And when I look at Jameis Winston's last 10 games mm-hmm. in Tampa, mm-hmm. better completion percentage, mm-hmm. higher yards per attempt, Uh-oh. higher passer rating. Good, I think nice. Bruce Arians is now going to the room saying, you know what? You guys told me that I'm getting the GOAT. Mm. I'm not getting the GOAT. I'm getting a sheep. Mm. And we <laughs> are sheep. Not a sheep, Lord. <laughs> not a sheep. But let me, can okay, I quickly yeah, put yeah, something yeah, in please, context, somebody, Mark? I don't need it anybody, long, Marcelo. Because it's just a game of hot potato that Bucky and I are playing. Bucky gave a stat, but I really want to drive it home. I want to drive it home. In 17 games last season, including postseason, Brady had a completion percentage of 60.5%. The only quarterbacks with a lower completion percentage Andy Dalton, oh, you Baker like numbers, Mayfield, you like numbers, Josh huh? Allen, Marce- Josh Ooh. Allen, Baker Mayfield, Andy Dalton, Marcellus. Ooh. Honestly, just throw in the towel, bro. I don't know if you got one by your desk, but just throw it in because I can get the ref to ring the bell. Man, y'all acting like Jameis Winston went out there and beat the Saints last year. Oh, he didn't. Oh, he lost both times. Oh, he had a four-pick game. Oh, and he's talking about, I got buyer's remorse. He knows what Jameis gave him against this same team. It was a bad draw for a new coach, New system for Tom Brady. He comes out there and, and struggles in one game. Emmanuel Sanders said he don't look cute in a uniform. And then y'all gonna start grabbing That's numbers so to give me a context oh, of who the was, GOAT was and who the GOAT the, is. But what, you know what? You know somebody is know lying to y'all, I don't America. Know what, I don't know what. When they talk about a player in a season that is 16 games long, and they start off their argument, Bucky, was saying, well, in the last 10 games, excuse me, Dougie Fresh, the season is not 10 games. If y'all want to go season to season, I'm listening. If y'all going to start parsing and taking out whatever's good for Jameis and bad for Tom Brady, even though Tom Brady was in the playoffs, Jameis Winston wasn't, I do not have time for this. Y'all can't slice it any way y'all want it. I mean, so so this is what's so great about you, Marcellus. I knew that you would go back and talk about the playoffs, but do you remember what the last pass that Tom Brady threw for the New England Patriots looked like? Pick six. It was a pick six. And then we saw against the Saints, it was a pick six. Oh I'm beginning to think mm. we are seeing trends. And remember, when Bruce Arians at the press, he was like, oh, man, you know, if we just get a quarterback that can just take care of the ball, we'll win a ton of games because that's the reason why they jettisoned Jameis Winston. Mm-hmm. Lo and behold... We now have a new turnover machine in Tampa Bay <laughs> and Tom Brady. Ooh. And so, however you like yours, I don't know if you like them cheese, cherry, apple, but he's that serving up those turnovers, and the losses come right after that. Marcellus, here's what you got to understand. I am bro. fighting this when, one to When the Superman death. shows up to the scene, <laughs> when Thor shows up to the scene, they don't say, oh, my God, they had a bad draw. That's what you're saying right now. How can the GOAT, Marcellus, the goat. have a bad draw? How can a super team have a bad draw? How can a team with Tom Brady, Leonard Fournette, LaShawn McCoy, Rob Gronkowski, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, coached by Bruce Arians, have a bad draw? They are the bad draw, Marcellus. Stop making excuses for a GOAT if he is now, like Bucky said, just a bad <laughs> Just a sheep. I am over here right now laughing at y'all. As I see Tom Brady has had 286 regular season games, and in 40 of them, he's thrown two interceptions or more. Oh, my God. Oh, I wonder if the other 39 was everyone saying he would never win a Super Bowl. He could never be the GOAT. Y'all miss me with this. When Jameis last year in his first three games already had seven interceptions, you think Tom Brady's going to catch that. And I can help you, Bucky, with your argument and still beat you, brother. It wasn't just the last game we saw Tom Brady throw a pick six. It was the game before that against Miami. And now we saw it last week with Tampa Bay. But one thing I know about the GOAT is the ability to self-correct. And when he self-corrects, oh, it's greater than anyone else. But before we go, it's time to make our Super 6 picks. One of the games is Brady's Bucks hosting the Panthers. I'm talking about the GOAT. Acho, give me a winner and by how many? They gonna get back on track. Give me the Bucks 31 <laughs> to 17. They're playing the Panthers. 31 to 17 over the Panthers. They're playing the Panthers. What you expect? Oh, what you expect? Man. They gonna lose to the Panthers. Uh, Bucky, what you got? Acho, Acho, I'm with you. It's Cupcake City. I'm gonna go with the Buccaneers 27 to 20 in spite of Tom Brady. They'll win. All right, I got it 29-24. The GOAT. Tom Brady and the Bucks. They got this one. Make sure you guys get your picks in before kickoff Sunday for your chance to win Terry Bradshaw's $100,000. And for top stories, scores, and more, 
Go to the Fox Sports app. Carson Wentz and the Eagles are favored by a point and a half at home against the Rams, according to odds provided by Fox Bet. Acho, some fans in Philly have started a petition to have Wentz bench for Jalen Hurts. So is Wentz already on the hot seat with the Eagles? <laughs> no, no. no, and I don't know who started this petition. Eagles fan, mm. let me remind y'all about yourself. Eagles mm. fans, y'all get it out the mud. Mm. Philly fans, South Broad Street, the link. All that. Mm. Y'all don't like things being easy. The Eagles don't thrive when things are easy. The Eagles thrive under adversity. Mm. What is this petition? Eagles fans, remember who you are. Isn't that what Mufasa? Who said that to uh to Simba? Uh, Marcellus? That was Mufasa. He remember. Said, remember. Remember. Remember who you are, Eagles fans. <laughs> Y'all are the epitome of the underdog. So you got a little adversity week one against the Washington football team. Remember who you are, but also Eagles fans. Remember who Carson Wentz is. In case you forgot, I'm reminding y'all and Marcellus. Let's go. Only quarterback NFL history, 400 passing yards with five, with no 500-yard receivers. Only quarterback oh, in NFL history, 4,000 passing yards with no 500-yard receivers. Jesus. That was last year. Oh. Eagles fans, let me remind y'all about Carson Wentz. Hmm? Y'all hosted a game in the playoffs last year. Because of Carson Wentz. It wasn't because of Alshon. Alshon wasn't around. He got hurt. It wasn't Hello. because of D-Jack. D-Jack got hurt. It wasn't because of Aguilar. It was because of Carson Wentz along with my guy Zach Ertz. Big up to him. So, Eagles fans, I don't get this. Mm. It's not like y'all are Cowboys fans used to the <clears throat> glitz, used to the glamour, used to being in first place, used to being front runners. Nah. They mm. used to getting it out the mud. So, Marcellus, on my first lap, first I just want to take this time to yeah, remind I'm the packed. Eagles fans, like, this is where y'all like to be. This is where we, I'm going to say we and remind myself of where I came from, my three years spent in Philly. This mm. is where we need to be. Mm. Get it out the mud. Mm. Ten toes down. Mm. You are over there emotionally charged in this one right here. This is a little too close to home for you, big dog. So let me step away from the force and break this one down. Is he on the hot seat already? No. But have you ever been to somebody's house, for me, it's my grandma's house, and you turn on the hot water, and you put your finger under there like, okay, okay, it's going to get hot. Everything, <laughs> it's coming sooner or later. And when all of a sudden you go, oh, bam, it just hits you uh -huh. from nowhere. It almost skips a step. It almost goes from cold to hot. And that's this moment right now. I would say the seat is warm and getting warmer, kind of like somebody been sitting in a chair, and then you sit in there, and you be like, who been sitting in this chair? And then Jalen Hurts turns around and be like, oh, it's me, big dog. I'm going to tell you, Talk to this me. is a real moment. Trust me, I'm a guy who went up the hill and also came down the hill. In, in defensive line terminology and in terms of how we go through this, when I was the man, I never, ever saw a coach talking about, yeah, you know, we want to put somebody in there in rotation. Rotation is a, is a curse word. Curse word. It's a curse word. Oh, let them get a little, you know, you, you get a spell. We need to spell you. <laughs> <laughs> the hell you talking about, coach? I never heard that before. Just watch. If Carson Wentz gives us week one's performance again, you just watch all of a sudden a rotation, mm -hmm. a spell, a wildcat, whatever it may be to kind of Take this to another level. Perfect segue. Perfect segue. Because, again, for you and for Eagles fans, because Eagles fans, I know y'all, you know, sometimes y'all act a little grimy, but I trust y'all intellect level. Remember, Marcellus, mm. last year Carson Wentz had two, only two, two-interception games. Okay. This week one he had a two-interception game. Last year he had two, two-interception games. Last year he threw two picks in week two. After that, from week three to week 10, he had 11 touchdowns and two interceptions. Over that seven-week stretch, That's he backdoored and he had 11 touchdowns, two interceptions. But uh-oh, week 12, Carson threw two picks again and another loss. After that, from week 13 to week 17, he had 10 touchdowns and one interception. Eagles fans, y'all been here before. Like this, y'all, this block's not even for me and Marcellus. Okay. This block is for y'all. Y'all have been here before. Literally, 2017, mm. you make the run to the Super Bowl unheralded run. You lose a Hall of Fame left tackle in Jason Peters. You lose a Hall of Fame special teams ace, but also great running back in Darren Sproles. You lose a Pro Bowl uh, uh, special teams player in Chris Marigos. You lose your starting middle linebacker, and you still make it to the Super Bowl because you're used to adversity. So, Marcellus, I don't even understand this topic. I'm baffled, I'm perplexed, I'm confused by this topic because it's really senseless.
It's did, in a Super Bowl run, did they also lose Carson Wentz? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, I told you he introduced a new narrative. Either you're injured, you're great, or you're actually not good. And we saw that in week one. He wasn't good. It was a tale of two halves. He looked different. Here's the thing about this peti petition, which is amazing. Quote, sign this petition to get Wentz's bum ass on the bench until he can learn to get rid of the ball, not overthrow an open receiver, and also not fumble. On top of that, we have injury concerns, durability, one pass completion for three yards in his entire career of January football. So now let's look at him. This petition says fumbler. Interesting, because his picks are low. He ranks 14th and since he's been in the league at 37 picks. Not bad. He takes care of the ball when he throws it. But uh-oh, damn it. He has lost 20 fumbles since he entered the league. Second to only... Jameis Winston. It's because he's trying to do a lot. I don't give a like, damn why. Trying, Marcellus, <laughs> I don't like, care how. A coach always told That's me. That's the you, problem. A coach always told me, he said, Acho, I would rather say nay than giddy up. I said, coach, what's that even oh, mean, going, coach? Yeah, like he that. said, I would rather have to pull the reins on you back in than have to tell you to get going. Yeah. And so many quarterbacks right now in the league, you just got to get them going. If the worst thing, Marcellus, that you can tell me about Carson Wentz that is that worse. you got to pull the reins back in, then, oh, my God, no. I'm sorry, Carson Wentz, for trying to win games. Carson Wentz is trying to do too much. That is his biggest fault. That is the biggest knock on him is that he tries to do too much. But can you blame him? Marcellus, remember? Yeah, I can, actually. Week I'm four, a coach. Week, I blame Week 14 to week 17 last year, his top receivers were Greg Ward off practice squad, Aww. a quarterback in college, Aww. a quarterback. Robert Davis and Deontay Burnett off of practice squad. Aww. So Carson Wentz has had to do too much. But fumbling doesn't mean that they dropped the ball. You dropped the ball. <laughs> like, I can have horrible receivers. Get them the ball. I ain't got to hold it and fumble. <laughs> it makes no sense. Look. He's lost seven fumbles last year. So we were like, all right, coming to this year, he's going to get rid of that. Two interceptions and a fumble last week. Three giveaways tied for the most in the NFL. Wait a minute. We now saw bad play. We saw a guy trying to do too much in his own words. And we see a guy that is now turning the ball over at the NFL leading rate. It's, you can cherry pick what you think is the worst. This is a death by a thousand drips. Like, this is the one. Like, everything is starting to just let puddle me, up against let Carson me, Wentz. Let me peacefully explain in conclusion what is going on with Carson Wentz. Uh, Great drips. man. I know the guy. Let me peacefully explain this. Last year, he suffered a little emotional PTSD. Every time he went onto the field, Marcellus, he had to do everything. Uh-oh, Zach Ertz has a lacerated kidney. Ah, uh, can I trust him? He's hurt right now. Uh-oh, I don't have my starting two receivers because Deshaun Jackson's been hurt. Alshon Jeffrey is hurt. Uh-oh, I don't have my starting running back because he's hurt. Everything depends on me. Everyone depends on me. Aww. So now he comes out there this game, and he actually has d -Jack. He has Jalen Rager. He has a first-round receiver. He has a plethora of talent. He has Goddard plus Ertz. Whatever but he's still trying to do too much in week one. That's the only problem, Marcellus. Mm. Just understand, Carson Wentz has been here before, and Carson Wentz knows where to go from here. I just need you to get that through your head. Eagles fans, I trust to do that. Yeah. I need you to get that through your head. I, I did not entice this guy to start the petition, even though I will sign it. It, <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. I say a thousand drips. And that puddle is looking like it may drown Carson Wentz and it may splash for Jalen Hurts. Be careful, big doll. You may be late to this party. Coming up, are things really fine in Tampa? We'll tell you if any drama will carry over for the Bucks on Sunday next. Speak for yourself. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself. Let's return to Tampa. Go. There's been plenty of drama after only one week. Bruce Arians called out Tom Brady for throwing two interceptions and questioned his determination and grit. Despite all that, Arians said everything is, quote, fine between him and his QB. Well, yesterday, Brady was asked about the criticism and had a very direct response. Let's take a look. Hey, Tom, there's, there's been a lot of talk this week about Bruce Arians kind of being Bruce Arians and kind of being blunt in his criticism of you and specifically in the two interceptions. How is that for you? I think there's a perception that you haven't taken a lot of criticism from your coaches before. I don't think this is something that surprised you this week, is it? Uh, so what's the question? You know, just just whether you were surprised at all to hear Bruce speaking publicly about the picks and, and, and being critical of you as he was. Uh, you know, he's a coach, so you know, I'm a player. Just trying to win a game.
I'm a player just trying to win a game. I'm a host just trying to host a show. But what's up, L.A.? <laughs> Marcellus, Ooh. you think... Bruce Arians, Tom Brady drama will have an impact on this week's game? Oh, you sound like that dude that asked the question. Drama. How you gonna term that as drama? <laughs> First of all, ask a, a cogent, concise question. <laughs> you will get a good answer. It, 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 what a setup question. He ended it by saying, is it gonna surprise you this week? Try to make an assumption like you're gonna get criticized again this week. Tom Brady's like, so what's the damn question? Uh, it, it, look. Tom Brady is suffering like we all are suffering right now in America, probably across the world. We all tired of Zoom. And Tom Brady looking into a damn camera like, man, y'all want me to be personable? Give me a person. Because this dude over there right now that I'm seeing through the screen trying to set me up with this trap question is not going to get the best out of me. But in all seriousness, golly, it's not that difficult, people. In the NFL, like in this world, when you win, <laughs> life's good. Glass half full. When you lose, oh, we got problems. Glass half empty. It's as simple as that. You should see the personality difference between a coach that won a game even though he had no business winning it versus a coach that loses the game. They come in completely different, 180 in terms of personality. For me, this is not a story. This is not drama. Tom Brady has thrown two picks or more 40 times in his career. I think he knows how to respond and take criticism. I think it will have impact on the game this weekend. And here's what's interesting. Drama. I learned this early on. You know, I didn't go to school for, for media, so I had to learn on the fly, you, too. you know, like some people. But <laughs> shut your mouth. Anyway, <laughs> the, I love deep. when you ask questions with answers, right? That right. reporter was asking questions with the answer. That was the first move that, that was incorrect. So, you Bang. know, do better with your questions. Come on, uh, bro questions without the answers <laughs> but it will impact this weekend and the reason why is because tom brady has been in these positions before he has been the underdog before he's probably probably secretly enjoying the fact that he's the underdog right now mm. have you ever been talked to that way have you ever been criticized that way we know he's been criticized that way we know he's been talked to probably way worse than that tom brady is going to be impacted by everything that is being said but it will be positive this is not a negative situation. You know why? Because Tom Brady knows how to win. Tom Brady is a winner. And Tom Brady knows how to network with the people that are on his team. Don't look at this as a downfall, a setback, a drawback. Look at it as a set up for a bigger come up. Oh, that was cute. <laughs> setback <laughs> for use a that comeback. In you know they use that Put in church, that on a preacher's son. <laughs> <laughs> look, you ain't lying. But you know somebody who is? Tom Brady. It's going to have a huge impact on this week's Stop game. Stop lying. <laughs> Why you always lie? Like, think about this, y'all. Tom Brady said, I'm just a player trying to win a game. Tom Brady, you the GOAT. Like the greatest of all time. You're not just a player and trying to win a game. Tom Brady, you went there to win a Super Bowl. <laughs> I'm just a player trying to win a game. Tom Brady already sounds depressed. He already sounds dejected. He already sounds oh, in his feelings. Like, he already sounds crazy. like there's an issue. But keep this in mind. Y'all know what coaches say in the locker room before you go out on the field. He said, hey, y'all got to be prepared for stuff to hit the fan. I had to censor myself because we're on TV. <laughs> yeah. Think about if Tom Brady trots out there, first possession of the game. He throws a pick, but it's a tip pick. It's not even like one of them picks that you go against Aussie, the quarterback. Aussie, Aussie, like, Aussie. It's, it's just one of those that, like, bad luck, bad fortune. He's going to be trigger shy the rest of the game. B.A. is going to be. So I think that, Marcellus, there is going to be an impact because we can't act like Tom Brady doesn't realize Man, I'm one to two picks away from everybody labeling this as a bad free agent signing. Tom Brady's aware of that. I think B.A. is aware of that. I don't think they're going to go out there with the same bravado that they typically have. It's going to have an impact on this week's game. I can't believe this, man. The lack of respect. What happened? Who? The lack of respect that what you happened? were given to the GOAT. What happened? Like, 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 Who like, is like, like he ain't been through this before. <laughs> yes, like, he you, ain't been through the wars. <laughs> Like, he ain't wearing these stripes. Like, 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 he ain't a vet. Like, he ain't the best vet ever. Like, he ain't the GOAT. You know what's so funny about this? What's funny? This is mirroring what's happening in our society at large right now with you millennials. It's funny. I had a conversation with my man John Heller, my producer, breaking it down. I am a guy who doesn't wear his scars, no matter how much they hurt and no matter how much they pain me. 
I don't wear my scars. Do it. But, but you, you was millennials. At the other night, Marcellus. Huh? You was at an, you was at In and Out. Oh, I eat my scars. The other night. <laughs> I nibble okay, at the scab. All right. All right. All right. Don't be lying but now. I got you on IG. I'm talking about where I'm from and what I've been through, and what I, the wars I've seen and survived and thrived through. I ain't wearing that. But you millennials see that since I ain't wearing that, y'all twist it up and think I ain't been through it. And it's amazing. I'm working with a millennial right now because Tom Brady ain't over there looking like, I got to show you everything I've been through. And here's my record. And here's my response to everything I've been through. A millennial, once again, gets this twisted. Like, Tom Brady hasn't had to respond to such criticism and greater criticism and greater adversity in the past. So you millennials out there who keep trying to test the goats, people like me who look fresh and clean, but who have stepped in it. Before, you better put although, some respect although, on our name. Although, sir, I am a slight millennial. I, I, I no, you acquire are a millennial. knowledge like a sponge. I don't want to be too cocky to not be able to listen. And while I was young, I was always listening to the adults saying things. And one thing stuck with me, Marcellus. Only one. Mm-mm, well, yeah, one thing stuck with me for <laughs> real. For I said, one. rules <laughs> without relationship equals rebellion. <laughs> rules without relationship equals rebellion. Not R. Right now, okay. Bruce Arians, he got a whole lot of rules. But him and Tom Brady, they don't have a great relationship. So that is going to lead to some rebellion on the football field. When did that happen? Y'all can steal that. What? Where do you get that? Where do you get that information? That was a a lie. Who ever told you that? No, no, no. Understand? I tell why you lie. Rock with me. Rock with me. Think about this, Marcellus. You can't correlate the rules that Bill Belichick had for Tom Brady to these rules that Bruce Arians has for Tom Brady. They don't have the same relationship, sir. I'm not gonna bust in your house and start telling your son, hey, turn the light out. It's time to go to sleep. Who is you? You ain't my daddy. We don't have the same relationship. That's my house. You can't talk to the same <laughs> this you, house. You can't talk to people who lack a relationship the same way. I don't want to talk about them old people you knew that told you that, but they sounded old. <laughs> like, they ain't know what they're talking about. LeVar, get this dude before I come back. All, all I'll say is, I, I said this on another show, Tom Brady needed to come out and be Tom Brady early on. I, I really believe that. While I will say I think it will have a, a, a positive impact on Tom Brady because he knows how to handle adversity. If anybody knows how to do it, that's in the game. Tom Brady is one of the top guys that has shown he can do it. But the biggest issue here I have with the drama and the impact is what will it do to the other players? You know, Emmanuel Sanders comes out and says what he said. and He didn't look like he was Tom Brady. What's Mike? Evans and those guys thinking, what's Godwin thinking? What's Gronk thinking? What, mm. what are guys thinking? And to me, the bigger issue here is not so much how Tom Brady handles it, because I think we all know that in the end, Tom Brady is going to handle it the way that Tom Brady knows how to handle it. But that, that idea and that impression of him being the goat and being this, you know, this superhero of a football player, that image took a very strong hit in his last game. And he's going to have to bounce back and have a big week in order for them not to, to lose that, that faith in what Tom Brady brings to the table. Can't become a name. Still got to be a player. Yeah, I'm just not into challenging his mental makeup. We could talk about his skills are old, and we could talk about him being in the new system and all that. But the mental makeup, man, this guy, when he was thrown into the fire after Drew Bledsoe got hurt, he responded, man, this dude won three Super Bowls in four years, like as a puppy. Like this dude knows how to show up when adversity faces is him. So now that we're going to see him as the GOAT, we're going to start to question it. Uh, might be a little issue there going forward. Coming up, a lot of people think LeBron has an easy road to the finals. Speaking of going forward, we'll tell you if his Lakers will respect the Nuggets enough more than my Clippers did. Next. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself. A funny thing happened on the way to the Western Conference Finals. The Lakers are playing the Nuggets starting tonight and not my Clippers. Ooh. Now, a lot of people see an easier road to the finals for LeBron, but he appears to not be taking them lightly, saying, quote, the respect level is out of this world for what we have for this ball club. Oh, interesting. Slick Rick the Buker is back with us, but Acho, any concerns? LeBron's Lakers won't respect the Nuggets? I have no concerns at all. Marcellus, what, what I learned about the Lakers, mm-hmm. and even in listening to Kuzma, unlike the Clippers, the Lakers don't play with their food. 
the Lakers realize what's on the table and Kuzma? they go straight in to eat. The Lion uh, Kuzma? Not a, that, Kuzma was keeping it 100 at that point in time with that quick soundbite. But that's yesterday's show. Let's move on with the present. Um, the Lakers, they respected every opponent in the bubble. But more importantly, the Lakers actually respect the bubble. Think about this. And this is when I knew the Lakers were going far. When Alex Caruso skipped his sister's wedding because he was like, man, if I come back and I'm going to have to quarantine, it's not worth it. I'm like, yo, bro, that's your whole sister's wedding. The Lakers respect the bubble. Lakers haven't had anybody miss the bubble outside of Rondo, and that was injury. So the Lakers, unlike other teams, they respect their opponents. But really, again, you look at the histor history of it all. The last time the one seed lost the conference finals to a three seed was 09. The Cavs lost to the Magic. Let's think who were on those teams. LeBron James, he was on the Cavs. Dwight Howard, he was on the Magic. Both those players now currently on the Lakers. So they have opposite ends of the spectrum. LeBron knows exactly what happens if you don't take those three seeds seriously. If you don't take those three seeds seriously, then you aren't going to win that game. Dwight Howard also knows, hey, I was that three seed. I was that team that got slept on. And if you sleep on me, I'm going to make you pay. So when I think about this Lakers team led by LeBron, they're not going to sleep on the Nuggets. They're going to give them all the respect they deserve. Yeah, I think they're going to respect them to the fullest uh, for a different reason, different reasons. Uh, it just hits you different when it hits you close to home. Remember I said that as I take you through, through some examples. One, you ever been watching the news, especially if you're watching world news, and you're like, wow, what's going on? All this crime, bombings, all this violence. And you walk out the house kind of affected, but really on your normal day. But what if you saw not what was on the news, but you saw it in your neighborhood, you were driving to work? That hits you a little differently as well. What if it's actually not just in your neighborhood, it's at your neighbor's house and you see the crime scene or something like that, you see tape around there. It hits you different. And that's why LeBron and the Lakers are gonna take the Nuggets seriously. One. It hit them close to home, the Clippers. They share the same city, same building, and a lot of those guys know each other very well despite their appearances on the court. But two, LeBron James, oh, it hit you right where it hurt before. Getting cocky in a series before, in the finals before. Prior to game five, Braun and Wade making fun of Dirk for allegedly suffering from the flu during game four. Y'all remember this? Oh, did y'all hear me call? Think I'm sick. <laughs> weather is crazy. It's hard to go from 85 degree weather and go to 90. <laughs> oh, oh, and now. And now. <laughs> Man, now. Oh, oh. They, 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 Dirk didn't want the sauce. They were looking at Dirk uh, like he was a nugget. No, no, no. <laughs> Dirk came back the next game, 29 on their head, and you know the Mavs closed out that series. So the point is, LeBron has felt it too close to home to ever take something for granted. You guys are asking me to make the same mistake I made with the Clippers, mm. which is not to pay attention to the clues that are being laid right before me to anticipate what is going to happen. What are you talking Ooh, about? Are you guys you? kidding me? By the way, Acho, who is keeping it 100? <laughs> oh, so this is the time he decided to keep it 100, huh? <laughs> when his trainer was to win an argument, and he followed up with a spade as a spade. He wasn't. He wasn't keeping it 100 that time or back when, uh, when when they had all the young guns and they were being traded and, hey, there's no problem between us and LeBron. He's just trying to throw us all to New Orleans. New Orleans. Ah! Ah, he was keeping it 100 there. Yeah, yeah. OK. <laughs> Guys, we're not saying this is we, we, we craft these questions. I appreciate this. We we craft these questions very carefully. It doesn't say are the Lakers going to lose to the Nuggets? Mm. It's, are the Lakers going to respect the Nuggets? Mm. No, they're not going to respect the Nuggets based <laughs> on what I've just seen because I heard them talking about how much they respected the Blazers going into game one. And how did that go? Oh, they lost that game. Uh, they were going to respect the Rockets because they had the number one defense in the bubble. What happened in that game one? Mm. Oh, they lost that one too. Mm. The Lakers, if they've demonstrated anything, is that, you have to earn their respect. But Slick, and I'm sorry, mm, but we talked all year long that. about this don't being that, Clippers Slick. Lakers. We're killing it. They heard that. Slick. Lakers Nugget. It's Slick. just Slick, you're it's not different. you're not being fair, Slick. Nah, Slick. You're not being fair. Slick, Slick, is Slick let me tell you why. Man. Slick, remember the Rockets game, I don't know if it was about a lack of respect or about a long layoff. 
The Lakers have been chilling. They was a little oh, bit rusty. What do we, what do we have now? Yeah. What but, do we have now? But to me, I'm not saying I, I'm not saying that the Lakers <laughs> yeah, are going Lakers. to sweep the Nuggets. I'm just saying they're going to respect them. If the Lakers lose tonight, it's not going to be because of lack of respect. If the Lakers lose tonight, it's because Danny Green probably going to go 0 for 6 from three-point line. KCP probably going to go 0 for 4. And Kuzma going to act like he's still 19 again, shooting reverse <laughs> layups on air. Like, if the Lakers <laughs> lose, it's not because of a lack of respect. I'm not saying the Lakers can't lose one game. I think the Lakers Lakers are going to win 4-1. It's going to be a gentleman sweep. Y'all have me on record. But I am saying that it's not going to be because of a lack of respect, Slick. Don't do that. Slick, get them back, Slick. You winning. You're up on the cards. Get them. The, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Lakers played the Nuggets four times this year. Mm -hmm. They one? beat them three out of four times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The one time that they lost, LeBron wasn't playing. LeBron James did not play. Correct. Mm -hmm. Acho, I love this idea of if they lose game one, <laughs> it won't because they didn't respect them. It was because the Nuggets were better. Like, wait, wait, wait. what? Oh, oh, the the Lakers tell. are the number one seed in the Western Conference, and they were playing the lesser of the two teams that they were expected to play. You ass. don't lose game one. You don't lose game one. The thing that was not, not, oh, you know what? The Nuggets were just slick. Well, they're better than we thought but, they were. But really? Okay, well, then. Realistically speaking, no, 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 the only thing that could be is because they didn't respect the Nuggets but, to the level that they will, should have. But if the Lakers ding, ding, saw ding, the ding, Nuggets ding, ding, just ding. beat the Clippers, if the Lakers saw the Nuggets beat the Jazz in seven, if the Lakers saw Jamal Murray go for 142 in three games, something we've only seen Jerry West and Michael Jordan do in the playoffs, three games consecutively, uh, collectively, how can you say that LeBron is going to see all of that and pay that yeah. no mind and no respect? Because he did the same thing with the Blazers. The Blazers came out of nowhere to clinch that playoff spot. The Blazers were the team that everybody said, including <laughs> including LeBron James. LeBron James said, they're not an eighth seed. They have all our respect. They're a tough team. And what did they do? They laid an egg that first game. They came out and said, what? basically, they talked the respect talk, but they did not walk the respect talk. So, look, I don't know if that's going to happen tonight. All I'm saying is, the history with the Lakers in these playoffs tells me that I should be concerned that they are going to respect the Nuggets to the level that they should. Oh, I got to break this up right now. I go back to Menace to Society after Jack in the Box. Cousin Harold laying down there. He dead. He dead. I'll show you gone. You dead. Oh, we got go to a commercial. Go to commercial. <laughs> the go Niners have publicly defended Jimmy right, G. talking, Marcel. Cousin Harold over here. We'll tell you if that's a bad sign for the defended NFC champs. That is wrong. Speak for yourself, Slick Rick. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself. Let's talk about Jimmy G, whose 49ers started the season with an L last week. Dating back to last year's playoffs, it's the first time he's lost back-to-back -back games as a starter. Despite that, he's still being called out by critics. His teammate Raheem Mostert pushed back, saying, quote, I believe in Jimmy G, and so does this entire organization. LeVar is back with us. Mm. But Marcellus, do you think the 49ers need to publicly defend Jimmy G? Uh, do they need to? No, they don't, but there is an avalanche of criticism that is unfair to Jimmy G, so sometimes you just got to do things you don't even want to do, and that's what his teammates are doing right now. Jimmy G is in an interesting place where a lot of people think that uh, his rewards, his success, a lot of it is unearned and unrealized, and it's unfair to him, and I know where the narrative came from. This is what happened. He was drafted to the New England Patriots and was supposed to take Captain America Tom Brady away from us. And everyone saw that. And there was already a little commotion because they were going to trade Tom Brady or get rid of Tom Brady for Jimmy G. People in New England and in the sports universe was like, what are you doing? Who's this Jimmy G dude? And then Jimmy G just sitting there like, I'm Jimmy G. I don't know. He goes out there. And in seven games, <laughs> he becomes the highest paid player in NFL history. People are like, 
this dude didn't earn that amount of money. So all of a sudden, gas meets fire. You got fans who are saying, what has he done? He didn't even be in this position where y'all think so much of him. He should never been in the conversation to get rid of Tom Brady. And then you have some players, secretly and coaches, quietly, saying, how does dude get all this money after seven games? Kaboom! And now Jimmy G who is a winning quarterback, who is a quarterback in his first full year as a starter, took his team to the Super Bowl and was up 10 points in the fourth quarter if only his defense, number two ranked in the league, would have just showed up for a few more minutes, would be a Super Bowl champion in his first year as a full starter, has to deal with all this hell. So, yeah, after a certain point, you just got to take up for the dude even if you don't feel like doing it. Now, they need a defender, Marcellus, because he's in need of defense. Right, we're opinionists, but we're also football analysts. So we need to do things that the fans can't necessarily do and really analyze the tape. I've said this before, and it's going to be a through time. line for me throughout the show. Figures don't lie, but liars figure. And the figures about Jimmy G, they may not lie, but liars will try to tell you, oh, well, if you just look at the numbers, Jimmy G's amazing. Well, let's quickly look at the tape. Last week, the Niners lose to the Cardinals. You'll see Isaiah Simmons. He's highlighted right there. Superstar linebacker. But then you'll see Raheem Mostert highlighted at running back, one of the fastest players in the league. Kyle Shanahan scripts this up. He says, I'm going to go mano we mano attack this rookie. Jimmy G throws a five-yard pass that I could have thrown, and I by no means have an arm. Aww. And Raheem Mostert takes it 76 yards to the crib. That Marcellus, that don't be lazy. That because if you're being real, that was 34% of Jimmy G's yardage on Sunday. That was 50% of Jimmy G's touchdowns on Sunday. But if you look at the box score, you'll say, man, Jimmy G threw for 250 plus yards. He threw for two tugs. Clearly it wasn't Jimmy G's fault. Jimmy G's the reason the Niners are winning. You have to look beyond the surface and look at the actual tape. Jimmy G is in need of criticism. Jimmy G's doing a good job, but Jimmy G's not doing a great job. Let's rewind back to when the Niners played the, played the Saints, probably Jimmy G's best game last year. I think it was 49 to 46. George Kittle won that game. He carried a dude 20 yards, got, got a face mask, stiff-armed another dude. So Jimmy G is good. Jimmy G is not great. Jimmy G is in need of defense for that exact reason. Mm. Jimmy G needs no defense, and Jimmy G has never – you guys have never seen or heard Jimmy G be animated or outgoing about defending himself. You know why? Because Jimmy G knows what he represents, all right? I, I, I grew up, this might be before your time, uh, Acho, but I was a big New Edition fan, all right? Mm. I used to love listening to them. And, and when I was growing up, they had a different sound than when they got a little older. Once they started getting a little older, the lead singer, Ralph Tresden, it was kind of like, ah, do we like Ralph? Ralph still has a kid <laughs> voice, but sure we're was. adults now. Like, should we feel comfortable about this, right? And then they bring in Johnny Gill because Bobby Brown left. Well, you know what? After the lead singer for the team that went to the Super Bowl the first time left, they brought in a new lead singer that had a little bit more bass in his voice. You ever notice how Johnny Gill never talked any trash, never said that I was better than Bobby Brown or they brought me in to replace Ralph Tresman, all this old other stuff? He just came in and sang. He came in and he made <laughs> the songs better, right? You didn't have to say, is he better than Bobby, Ricky, Ronnie, right? Or Mike. You just sat there and listened to Johnny Gill sing. And that's Jimmy Garoppolo. He doesn't have to tell y'all that I'm this good. His teammates don't have to tell you that I'm this good, right? Because the shows that they put on are sellout shows. They made it all the way to the Super Bowl with Jimmy Garoppolo. So Amen. whether he deserves to oh, be sorry. praised as a great quarterback, <laughs> oh, whether God. he is looked at as this, this guy that is a Grammy <laughs> award-winning artist, right? Yes. His body of work speaks for itself. He needs no defending. Yes, and Acho wants to say people are being lazy by showing, oh, my God, lazy. a quarterback that throws a short the pass and then it turns into a long game. That's Tom Brady kind of, throws that's a lot of short passes. All of them do. Throw. Drew Brees is the slant king. Yeah. That that's what, all they do. But here's the point. What he didn't point out since he's lazy is that in the second half, he was without his top two receivers and George Kittle. He lost the game. Oh, oh. He lost oh, the game. He lost the game. What are you bragging about? When you they lost the game. Lose the they lost to the Cardinals. So, look. What's the, what, what are you bragging about? It, 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 first of all, it's one it, it's, game. It, it's one game in your division and, and, and the Cardinals. A better team. No one wants to see the Cardinals, especially oh, in their division. because how they come. I'm not saying that. Here's the thing. Highest career career passing ratings Come on, all, uh, of active quarterbacks. Mahomes, <laughs> Rodgers, Wilson, Watson, 
Jimmy G. Who has a few starts? Take Come on. that. Who has a few starts? That's only one hand. Coming up, that's only one hand. Jimmy will wrap up the week starts? by giving today's show a letter grade. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Look at Uncle Jimmy. Yeah. Next. Speak Before for yourself. We go. A tear has to drop right now for our guy, Kyle Libby. Mr. Our coordinated Libby. producer Mr. is leaving Libby. our show, but he's going to land in greener pastures. My heart. He's going to Fox Bet Live, man. Kyle, you know how much we love you, big dog. Respect. Yeah, Nacho just met you, but he already in love with you. He <laughs> loves you more than me. But respect to you, Kyle, man. We're going to still be family no matter where you're working. But before we go, now we got to bring in somebody else in the family. This dude, Uncle Jimmy. Uh, Lord, what letter grade would you give today's show, Uncle Jimmy? What up, Uncle uh Hey, Wally, you know what I like about your performance today? Performance? Yes, sir. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. That's why you get an F. <laughs> what? I mean, you get an F for all you did today. You just simply perpetrated a fraud. You get a C for showing Rick up. Rick Euclid came in here today and looked you in your face and called you a fabricator of facts. Ooh. Okay? Yeah. Dude came in here on a Friday <laughs> and called you a fake fugazi on your own show <laughs> on the For Real For Real fam. <laughs> I show. What up, Aunt? I'm giving you an A. My Cause I find a. you to be amazingly ambidextrous for someone of your age. <laughs> also, you get an A for making Wiley say the word A A R P on TV. Yes. <laughs> I got it out with us.